Welcome to episode 11 of Conversation on Eagle Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining me on the panel today is Hill. Hey. Liz. Hello. And Sabine. Hi. We have episodes notes done by myself, Kata, and new researcher, Matt. So episode 11, a screenplay was done by Charles Hodges, and it was directed once again by Wayne Terrell. And episode synopsis we read out this week by Sabine. It's up to Lex to get Jack off the hook for hiding food from the rest of the tribe. Otherwise, Lex's own secret supply of water may be revealed as well. Meanwhile, displeased with Lex's sexist work assignments, the girls decide to band together, refusing to work until fairer tasks are assigned. Can I just say that I love this episode and I think it's one of the more brilliant ones and I really This is a good one. This is the episode where the show found its footing. The actors, they know who their characters are now. They're comfortable in the roles. The dialogue is sparkling. The direction is great. Even the camera work is better. I, I, mm-hmm. I almost feel like there was a break between the last episode and this one. And this is just, it's so on par. It's so great. I f- I think you got to it last week where you said like they're finally over the introduction of the characters and now we're just getting into like figuring out like how it goes now. Like there's more story versus exposition. Now you're into, okay, we know who these people are now. Let's see how they work together. Exactly. Nothing has happened yet. So what am I doing in here? Exactly. You're in here, not out there on the streets. You got me to thank for that. How would it look if I just let you get away with it? Look, I'll try and get you off with just a bit more extra work. No! This is my place and the food! If you don't stop them, I'll tell them about you ripping off the water. Are you threatening me? Because if you are, I can still arrange for you to leave now. Yeah, well I haven't got anything to lose, have I? That's called blackmail. Yeah. I know just how it feels. Episode 11 kicks off um, with the cliffhanger from last episode with Jack now in the mall's um, security lift. And it's in this scene where Lex confronts him um, and Jack tries to blackmail him to get him out. There's a lot to unpack in this, but let's start with, um, do you think it was a smart move by Jack to blackmail Lex? I give him props for trying. Like, (laughs) good job. Like, you are that desperate. Like, let's see if this works. I give him credit for that. It does. It was a smart, though, desperate move. I oh, mean, yeah. Reminding Lex that Lex has something to lose in us as well was genius. Because he could have easily been kicked out. And then mm-hmm. Lex would have been happy with having all the food. But he just reminded him that, okay, if I'm going down, you're going down with me. <laughs> yeah. Jack is basically saying the only crime I've committed is I got caught. Everybody here is breaking all the rules that we, mm. these arbitrary rules. Yep. I'm not the only one and it's unjust and I'm in trouble when all of you are doing terrible things. And yeah, I'll bring all yeah. of you down. He could have taken a lot of them down with him. But it is, it's a very desperate plea for a desperate man. And I think it's telling. But I also think it's really important, especially for a young audience to understand that if you are complicit in a crime... Mm. You're just as guilty in many ways because you're allowing the crime to go on because it benefits you, you know? And so is Jack any more guilty than the rest of them, you know? And no. I, I also like it because it's like Jack and Lex are just mirror images staring at each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, you two are so alike. <laughs> and that's actually brought up later on during the trial when, you know, they're all like, well, let's sing them out. And Lex says, like, you can't because then you, you know, gotta call out you, everybody, everyone everybody. else. And you see everyone's face when he says that, like, they cut to each character and, like, their faces are like, oh, sh- yeah, that's me. <laughs> oh, crap. Like, ah. I do feel bad for, Le- uh, for Jack, though. I do. I do. I mean, granted, again, I'm not saying he's innocent or anything, but I do feel bad for him because he allowed himself to get bullied into this corner. Mm-hmm. by people and and now those people have turned on him you know and uh, making him the martyr like, right you have to feel bad for him because you know he, he didn't does. sign up for that jack's taking the fall for everyone's bad deeds at this moment and granted he definitely 
got himself here. He's not an innocent, you know. No, but um, nobody is at this point. Nobody is. That's true, you know. No, I mean, I think the only innocent person is Brady. <laughs> at this no, point. at this at this point, but Celine even then, is she's still quite innocent. Is she though? At this point, he is. She did try. She was the one who wanted to look after the kids, who gave them their food, the food she had. But I still think. I mean, we haven't seen it, but I think she's probably still taking food on the side. I'm not sure if she already was at this point. She might be. I mean, I think it might. Didn't we say it was kind of hinted at? Like, yeah, it's been hinted at already. It's being. It's hinted at. So I can't. Say, I can't say that she's fully innocent. She might not be as. Her hands might not be as bloody as the rest of theirs. <laughs> she's probably getting in a few extra scoops of dinner. Yeah, as well, cooking it. Someone has to And she's probably yeah. She's she's on yeah. She's taking stuff on the side. The so, only people who are the only ones who are innocent of anything are Brady and Bob. Everybody else is psychologically yeah. dirty in some form. <laughs> no, like, uh, not even so. Bob. <laughs> not even yeah. Bob. If Bob, Bob is not innocent. We blame Bob for a zoot stuff, so... He's yeah, but I don't think that, that was totally justified. Bob <laughs> but also, <laughs> they say in this episode that Lex and Bob are getting more food. So Bob is still also getting more food as well. Even That's though a human is giving it to him. Wow, I'm going to bring that out when we get to that scene. Yeah. But that is very interesting that he would give Bob more food. Right! When he had I more have theories on that. Bob in the first place. I have, I have a slight theory on that. But yeah, really. uh, you know, where we are with Jack, I do feel a little bad for Jack. And I think this is a beautiful way to teach children a lesson about how your your actions have consequences, you know. And yeah, yeah like, is should, should Jack be slung out? Should he be guilty of what he's doing? Um, Jack finds himself backed into a corner. He, lie, he lay with dogs and now he's got fleas. What does he do? Blames everyone else. Or no, he doesn't do that, but... No, he doesn't. He's just, he's pointing out the injustice of, look, yeah. I didn't ask you people to be here, and you guys blackmailed me. Why am I the only one getting in trouble here? That's not fair. That's not cool. But that's the thing. A lot of kids will think that, well, other people are doing bad things, so it's okay if I do bad things. And I think the show is doing a good job of showing them that, no, it doesn't matter if other people are doing bad things. That doesn't justify your bad thing, you know? Very true. Very true. It's also interesting how, um, like, Lex kind of knows that he can get off get him off with just a few extra chores and that this isn't as big a crime as the others are making out i mean because i think that he realizes that everyone else is kind of doing things as well mm. what i like about lex here is how quickly he is how quickly he's assessing the situation and how to manage it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i really like seeing lex on his feet solving problems i like I like a productive Lex. That's what I really <laughs> love about Lex. I love when he's using his skills to be a productive person. You know what I mean? And um, I really like seeing him. He's looking at the situation. And yeah, you're right. He's like, okay, Jack sold food. Not cool. But we can deal with this. It doesn't have to be an over-dramatized thing. And you can see him managing the situation and having to shift very quickly when new evidence is brought to light, a new opinion is brought to the fore. And how quickly Lex deals with it. He's protecting himself, but he's being so clever about it. You kind of have to respect it. Yeah. So I can do. You, how do I want to say this? I've always thought that that was a because in the pre tribes you see that he was somewhat abused as a child. I I always felt felt like his thinking on the feet and assessing situations was like oh yes because he's so had to do like. You know, not to go into personal history, but like he is someone who's had to, you know, think on his feet and, you know, white lies to get out of things based on his upbringing. So, yeah. So. But what is really amazing watching Lex like this is it proves that Lex is more effective when he isn't using force to get people to mm -hmm. do what he wants. When he is using his intelligence, his intellectual side, which he does have. How well he can work with people when he's not bullying them and threatening them. It's so great to watch him use his skill set to get people on board with what he wants them to do. I also really love Lex in this episode because Lex being in power takes him off of the defensive. He's actually a decent person when he's not constantly fighting to prove that he should be in charge and that he's got power. He has it, he calms the frick down, and can actually function and work with people. 
yeah, he's got some issues, but those can be ironed out. I, I yeah. love being Lex in this episode. Like, oh, look at all that potential, you shiny star. That, that <laughs> part of him does come out later in the series, though, too. But then saying this is the episode where you see it, you really you see start it. to see it. Yeah. Like, look yeah, at yeah. him. Look at Lex when he's not choking people and threatening to hurt them and just so angry at everybody. You know, I'm like, oh, look, look at you, sweetheart. You are just an egg waiting to hatch. <laughs> Hello. Celine says you're not coming to the trial. Well, Trudy's not feeling too good. We could do with you there. We need someone sensible in case it gets out of control. Oh, that's me, is it? Someone sensible? Amongst other things. They're talking about throwing Jack out. We can't do that. He's too valuable. You insisted on something being done. Lex wanted to leave it. Well, that wouldn't be right either. I just don't want it getting out of hand. I'm sure you can handle it. And yeah, from someone who wants power to someone who wants absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. That's lovely. Here. That way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, poor uh, brother. Okay. He, he just wants no responsibility. He wants no attachments. And we see this clearly as like Amber tries to kind of poke him to go to the trial, but he just doesn't, doesn't want to stay. He doesn't want to go to trial. He wants to save Trudy. He just, he just doesn't want to be a part of the tribe, really. You kind of see the strain. I love Amber's line. What is it like? Um, when are you going to decide whether you're a part of us or not? Like, because yeah. that's exactly how I feel with Bray right now. Like, you make a choice. Like, are you a part of the tribe? Are you not a part of the tribe? Like, are you just floating in this pool? Like, do something. And see, that's why I felt like when he was talking to Trudy when she's unconscious and he's going on about the dream of how great everything's going to be, it felt like an empty promise because here's Bray. He is not willing to put any effort into creating that world. He just wants to skate by. He is resentful that the world's not great, but he doesn't want to do anything about it. He doesn't want to actually be a participant in it. He just wants to sit there and pout because it's it, not wonderful. <laughs> oh. The older... So the older I get and the more times I watch this show, because I watch it fairly recently, the more I hate Bray. And I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I really? Like Hill, you don't like Bray? I, I do not like Bray. Bastard. I'm absolutely well, shocked. I I, did you know this? Did any of you know this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you're being facetious. Hey, that's not fair I'm just, to the I'm just, person. I'm you're totally not allowed to do that. Hill. I'm totally uh, teasing. If, if she gets to say she doesn't like Bray, I get to have my say now, right? Because... Ah, uh, Amber annoyed the crap out of me with her. Oh, Bray, you're the only sensible <laughs> person in this mall. She's suddenly disregarding people like Dell at the moment with a, you know, you're the only sensible one right. here. Wait, wait, wait. She had, she had, a, she had, a, she had a point there because Dal was ready to kick Jack out. He was like, what? You're hoarding food? Like, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Dal was like, Amber yeah. is just I trying to gather all the people who can think more than two feet in front of them and she's like look we need as many people who are not going to be as biased about this to make a decision and she's still trying to include everyone in the tribe and that includes bray and she is right you know he doesn't have his is but she also wants in his fan i don't think <laughs> one has anything to do with it sabine <laughs> yeah she does though. i do she think she does he, does. he, he wants him to spend less time with trudy Oh my more, goodness, yeah. you guys. So she, she's trying to get wow. him to do stuff so that he has no time for Trudy so she can Stop get in his pants. Stop projecting onto Amber. <laughs> Stop trying yeah. to turn this girl into a villain. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Even if Amber is attracted to Bray, which we know she is, she was able to always put the sensible thing ahead of her attraction to him. She is not a girl who is led by how damp her knickers are. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Okay. We'll get to that later on, but yes. <laughs> Lance so, is up, ladies. I'm just saying, I don't believe for a second that the only reason Amber is talking to Bray about this is because she wants him or she's trying to keep him from Bray, Trudy. All the evidence does not support that, guys. And you know it. I don't care how you feel about Amber. You may not like her, but come on. Let's not villainize her for being sensible. I love Amber, but... <laughs> She's not doing any of that. She is being honest when she's saying, look, dude, we need people who can think clearly. And even though Bray has his flaws, he is one of the few people who can think clearly at the trial. She needs as many of those people around, people who aren't easily influenced or easily bullied or easily led, you know. And she is also trying to make sure that everybody in this group is a part of the tribe. And 
you know, contributing to it. And Bray is one of the hardest people to get to contribute to the group, <laughs> you know? Except for Trudy. <laughs> <laughs> Bob should have just been the leader. It would have solved all these problems. <laughs> hey, no, she didn't try to get Trudy to get there. Could you imagine, though? Like, why didn't they vote for the dog? Language issues. I think that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Could you have seen the kids, though? Like, why didn't the kids be like, Bob should be the leader. We'll vote for Bob. Bob is such an introvert. We don't know what he's thinking most of the time. <laughs> thinking about, like, bones and chasing animals and things. I don't know. But getting back to the responsibilities that are creeping <laughs> up on Bray. I got your back, Lance. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel for him because the reality of his situation is really setting in on him. He, it's honorable to say, Martin, my brother, I loved you. I failed you. I'm going to raise your daughter. I'm going to be there for her and then deal with the actual reality of that. And he's stuck in this mall. And you can see that Bray is at a loss. He had a plan. He had a plan and he was gung-ho for it. And he was willing to do whatever it took to make that plan come true. Save his brother, get Trudy and Martin together, and they would be a family. And yay, his job would be done. And he failed at it. His brother is gone now. And now he's got Trudy and he's got Brady. He didn't want that. And he's trying, but... um. It, this is a lot harder than he imagined, and he's struggling with it every second of the day. One minute he's trying to be very nice and patient with Trudy, and then all she's do is say the wrong thing, and he's just like, "I am gonna stab her with a fork." Like, why is she? Why is she being so difficult? You know, I was able to keep it too close to my chest for nine months when I took care of her because I thought I'd be rid of her, and now I'm stuck with her. And I, I think anyone who has ever had to suddenly become like a parent or responsible for someone and take on that kind of task can understand that resentment that you didn't expect to feel. I do feel for him. He's what? He's 16 years old. He didn't want this. He didn't ask for it. He's basically paying for a mistake he didn't make. Mm. He didn't sleep with Trudy. He didn't go crazy and push Trudy away. He didn't do what his brother did. And yet now he has to live with his brother's consequences. You know what I mean? It sucks. Yeah. I wouldn't want it. Couldn't use a condom, could you, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, the the deeper lesson of the tribe is wrap it before you tap it. <laughs> Consequences, children. Consequences. <laughs> That's what they should have been hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> Teenage sex brings about the end of the world. Just like right, you said. Hey, we I'm surprised kids. there weren't more babies around. It was like they did well. Right? <laughs> they they did. That's true. In the real world, they would have already started a new island nation. <laughs> <laughs> the new island nation. Sorry. That was good. Uh, is Amber justified for calling Bray out? I do think she is because he's very frustrating, waffling on the fence. You know, like, Bray, dude, make up your mind. If you're going to stay here and take on your brother's responsibility, then freaking do it. And stop exactly. you know, moaning about it. Stop being that martyr who wants sympathy for it, okay? Cut it out. So there's a lot of falling on their swords in this episode. I know. And it's just like, like the fact that you just said that. Like Bray's falling on a sword, Jack. And if you're gonna fall on the sword, could you just shut up about it? I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Come right? on. Die quietly with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like Amber though. And I don't think she's the villain for calling Bray's <laughs> out. I just don't, you know? <laughs> But I feel bad for Bray because I do understand that he is a child and this is this is a rough situation he's in and trying to own up to what you said you're going to do and the reality of that, I, him and Trudy, those are very real conversations you have as a new parent, even with somebody you decided to procreate with and you're happy to procreate with them. I'm going to live with you forever. I want to die with you. You can still have these kind of arguments with them. It's it's True. the it's basically the truth behind the fairy tale. What's going on behind the curtain of that pretty family with the baby? This is what's happening behind the curtain. <laughs> yep. I think we should make up our own set of rules, like a law, and then agree to it so that everyone knows where they stand. Yeah, moving up on to the trial. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting like setup here, because in, in the trial, Amber proposes that they create their own set of laws to kind of define this new world of theirs. Um, I, I've mentioned this loads of times. <laughs> how, <laughs> like Danny storylines in season two, they were seeded here for Amber before she left the show. Um, but like 
Let's move on to the, to that, the laws itself. Do you agree or disagree um, of the kind of notion of a bill of rights for tribe world? I absolutely agree. I agree. How can anything you do be wrong if there aren't any rules saying that you can't do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't count on people to use common sense. That's what they've been doing. They just assumed, you know, we know common sense. You don't call someone's house after 10 o'clock at night. But, you know, what? the real world doesn't work that way. Sorry, it's one of those unspoken rules. Like, you just, <laughs> you don't have to say it, but you just don't do it. You don't call a stranger after 10. It's the unspoken law. You don't yeah. do that. You know? Um, I almost think, like, when you put a name, like, she makes it very official sounding, like, a bill of rights. Like, I think, you know, thinking that these are still kids, like, that makes it very official. Um, I, I get that we need these laws and we need rules, but, like, bill of rights, like, even Xander says, like, we don't need those rules because it's, like, too official. If you don't have any rules, then how can you be mad at Jack? That's what, that's no, what no. Amber is trying to get to the point of. If yeah, we don't no. know, if we don't actually have any rules, how can we actually accuse Jack of breaking a rule? Yeah. One, one thing that I was glad at was that the moment Amber mentioned it, people instantly started whining that they don't want to set a rule. Oh, like, I get it. And I get the, you know, you need to have, when she says, think about this, like, what do we do when someone really does something bad? Like, and... Jack has qualities that we need in this world. Yeah. But I think putting like a very official type term to it yeah, but she is didn't. something that she calls it a bull, bill of rights, though. No, she doesn't. Well, she says, she she says, says like a set of laws, but we yeah. should just have I a, know, set, of said a set of rules. All Danny said, all Amber says is maybe we should have some rules, like a sort of a law that we know we have to follow. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's, you make a great point, Hill, that. As soon as the kids hear that, they're oh yeah. we don't have to we don't want to follow rules and it's like yet you're ready to throw Jack out. That's the thing, like like you know these are still kids. You can't most kids you can't say like oh here are the rules because then they're just like mm. but if you present it in a more I don't know kid friendly term, I think it's about authority and what a child will accept authority. And um, I, I you know if, for example as a parent I can tell my children this is the rule and they aren't fighting me on that. They're not going to be like, um, um, we don't want you to present it to us that way because we don't like that. But I'm an authority figure. They accept yeah. my authority, you know. Uh, but of course, if I watch my children with their cousins playing, there are different mm -hmm. rules of authority. There are certain cousins who could say, this is how we're going to play the game. And all the other cousins are fine. But if another cousin says, this is how we're going to play the game, all the cousins are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't have to play it the way you want to. If you have a group of kids one of the things that work actually seems to work best is just having everyone have their say about what those rules should be and to me it seemed like that's what amber was trying to do like we all have to come up with the rules because if people have input in what the rules are they're more likely to follow them yeah it also raises some interesting questions because like um obviously if you're going to create a set of rules like who's going to follow them outside of the tribe? You're just creating a set of rules for yourself because another tribe might not follow yeah, those rules. They don't rules. care about you. <laughs> like, but I've always... Obviously, I've played too. You but, know, you know. I, I know we're led to believe, like, we're supposed to only really care about the mall rats, but I almost feel like, you know, the locos we've seen, they kind of already have a set of rules, whether it's a written down rule or not. Like, I, I, I think there is, like, they have their stuff figured out. Whether yeah, they, they've got their own yeah. power in this room. Whether so. they have, whether they're still having the same drama at episode eleven, like in the world that the Mallrats are having, we don't know. But when you do see these other tribes, the little that we get, they seem more cohesively together than the Mallrats do at this point. They are even the demon dogs. That. Yeah, like, I mean, they yeah. have guard duty. You know, like, they, they have. Yeah. they have rules. Whether <laughs> You know, whether they're written or not, they, they all have their place. And, you know, the mall rats are this brand new baby tribe that aren't even named. But they still, they seem very behind and not willing to give up sort of the mm. comfort for a little bit of, you know. Yeah. Rule, well, that, I guess. Makes, that makes perfect sense because the mall rats are barely formed. You know, they are, they're, they're kind of like the United States. I hate to break it to, but. Like, other countries have been around a long time. Now, my home of origin hasn't. We're basically the adolescents 
when it comes to how long a country has been around and what we've had to go through. And so, yeah, we don't, we don't have it together, <laughs> you know, compared it's to true. other countries that have been around a long time and have had the time to, the Malrats have just formed. So yes, they are working through all the stuff that these other tribes already did. They've been together for months and months, I you know? That. I'm just saying that like, the Malrat should be able to look and see like, oh yeah, they've, they need these things. I don't know. Because think about it. The logo is formed almost directly after the virus. Yeah, they've been Eight together a long ago. time. They've been together a long time to work out their, you know, establish how they work. And the demon dogs probably have had the same amount of time. The Morads have literally known each other for less than a week. I do love Zandra's lack of self-awareness at her hypocrisy. Here they are. They want to, she wants to sling Jack out in the street for hoarding food. But at the same time, like, we don't want rules. We want to do whatever we want. It's like, well, then Jack hasn't done anything wrong, has he? Yeah. Yeah. She's not even aware of that. Like, how ridiculous but that sounds. She also said, like, a couple episodes that she doesn't. They don't want rule. Like she doesn't like people telling her what to oh, do. Oh yeah, she's repeat. She yeah. said it over and over again. But at the yeah. same time, now she's mad at Jack. Yeah. And trying to tell him that, well, you were wrong for doing this. Like, um, according to your rules, Zandra, he he didn't do anything wrong. He was yeah. totally and allowed to do that. I think that also just goes back to like kids craving sort of a structure, but also not wanting to allow themselves a structure. Like any mm-hmm. kid will tell you they don't like rules, but at the end of the day, they kind of like. No, Hill, you're it. absolutely right. That's how children are. And yeah, that's how yeah. children are. We may not like the restrictions placed on us, but as soon as we're dealt with the rea- reality of not having those restrictions, we recognize how much we do need them. And it's always, we're always going to chafe against it, you know? And kids, especially, give them too much freedom and they want you to swoop in and save them. Save us from ourselves. If someone's going to be punished, it's too important to be one person's decision. Just because you're the leader doesn't give you the power to do whatever you like to us. That's right. It's not a proper trial without a jury. I think Lix should decide. Do you? Why is that, Jack? Yes, why, Jack? I, I, don't, I don't know. So, moving on to the trial itself. Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's first start with Jack, because... <laughs> How more obvious could it be <laughs> to to show that Lex is hiding something for you? Like, right. he, he immediately jumps like, "Yeah, let's let let Lex decide my fate for me." Like, yeah. <laughs> how obvious was it that he made that? It was so obvious. I know, but it was cute. Like, it's so cute because we know the reason why he did that because we see the trial from like all po- sides. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like. <laughs> I love Amber's. Why is that, Jack? <laughs> and I think uh, at that uh, point, maybe they all know. Like, I think I they know. Everyone knew that the way with Lex responding that way, he had to be in on it somehow. <laughs> but I'll say that this is why I make this trial is one of the few I actually really like in the show because it does adhere to the rule of law. You may know in your heart that Lex is somehow guilty, somehow party to this. Maybe somehow rigging the system, but if you can't prove it in a court of law, mm-hmm. doesn't Literally. matter. Your suspicions mean nothing. <laughs> yeah, Lex, he, he he manages the system very well, and I actually really love Lex during the trial because, again, I said yeah. I like a productive Lex. I like when Lex is getting what he wants by not screaming at people, being mean to people, bullying people, physically threatening people, but using his intelligence, which he has plenty of. And he's being very clever and quick-footed. And he's not even being um, unfairly manipulative. He's calling everybody out on their stuff. Like, Lex is is like, I'm guilty. Jack is guilty. But we certainly are not the only two guilty people in here. So cut the hypocrisy, every single one of Mm -hmm. you. You know? And I thought that was a very clever way to make things go his way. He could have threatened everyone. He could have blackmailed everyone. But he doesn't. You know, um, he plays to the fact that he's certainly not the only one doing something wrong. You know, and I thought that was yeah. very, very clever. I'm like, yay, Lex, using your brain. <laughs> I love during the trial, like, you know, where Lex is kind of using his head and thinking things through. Like you said, little mild mannered Ryan is the one who's like, let's starve him and public flogging and like really violent. Don't worry, Jack. I'm sure the locust will have room for you. Yeah, like they—it's almost like Ryan and Lex like swap brains or something. Like 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't mess with Ryan and food when you, when you, get, when you get in the way of so Ryan. Funny. <laughs> like, it's Slugging the merit of people. season one. Even sweet Ryan, who doesn't seem to ever want to hurt anyone, is just as capable of being a tool. You know? <laughs> Ryan! <Yeah. laughs> food is his kryptonite. Like, if you get in the way of that, he, like, I know, it. but I, just, I love it. <laughs> I just I love how he's like, yeah, we should just have a public flogging. Like <laughs> dude, dude, sit down. Really about it. <laughs> Ryan, how many floggings have you seen? <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you watching as a child? But I also think the trial is super important for children in a whole different way. Um, it really talks about how the complicity of a crime. Um, it's so easy for everyone to say Jack is wrong, he's bad, this is what he's done. And it's only when Lex points out that if we're going to punish Jack for this crime, we have to punish everyone for all the other crimes. And only then do these kids start thinking, oh, maybe Jack's not that guilty because if I was in Jack's shoes, you know, even Chloe, who's, who's not even you know, there and I, I, she's with Bluebell. I think that's really important for children to understand. It's, it's not preachy, and yet it's still getting the message mm -hmm. to a young audience. The, the way you said it's not preachy, that boils it down. Like where you have these characters who are saying, hey, I don't like being told what to do. Like the tribe is actually talking to young viewers and coaching them through this stuff, but they're doing it in a way that gets down to them, mm -hmm. which is actually really kind of a cool thing. And kids don't know they're pulling value yeah, from this, but they exactly. are. Like, and so we we've analyzed it and like why why they've acted like this and how to get people to do a rota and stuff when at the end of the day like the show is putting in our brains things that we didn't even realize and if you just in that scene alone moment you see patsy realize that oh no they messed up as well they could be in trouble next <laughs> mm -hmm. goes, face. chloe put up your hand her face and of course, Chloe's thinking, I do have an illegal calf in the car park. <laughs> no, Who's okay. just about to make an appearance. I've been stealing food for a cow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I love her, though. But yeah, that we see that all the time. We see people who will protect those who are guilty because they, too, have sins. And they're trying to genuinely just protect themselves. And I think it's very important for children to learn that lesson early on without knowing that they're learning a lesson about it at all. Yeah. One, one I think that's what makes the tribe effective. Too. It does. One thing that did surprise me about this episode was Lex's lovely line of the tribes are about to make peace. And all I can think is like, just no Lex, you hardly leave them all. <laughs> you don't even have a normal conversation with anyone outside of the mall so if bray hasn't heard it neither has lex i i was wondering about that like lex are you just talking out of your butt because you haven't gone anywhere to find out this information i love yeah. because i keep my ear to the ground where where lex <laughs> like are you where are you finding this out the closest you've come to being able to get glean any information from outside is to sit on the roof and steal water and maybe you might have gotten smoke signals <laughs> like you haven't gone anywhere well he went to play baseball with Dal. yeah and they he did go he came back later than Dal. so not but that's because no. he just took he was just taking the tribes on a run so that Dal yeah could make but, but he's he not have. He didn't glean any information. Not to mention, not what, what he saw, he didn't see any tribes getting along. So, come on. Mm -hmm. I, I do think it's just funny that Lex has decided to make this an argument. Because it's because, because Bray said something, you know? And yeah, of, course, totally because Bray. of course, Lex is going to be argumentative. He can't stand Bray. Bray could be like, the pen is blue. Lex is going to say it's red. You know what I mean? It doesn't, care what, it doesn't matter what color that pen is, you know? <laughs> I was just like, Lex, how do you know? How do you know? <laughs> But it works. In, it works in his favor to say it, you know. Yeah, it works. And we do, we do see him kind of doing, keeping his ear to the ground and hearing things in later seasons too. So I don't know. I don't yeah, know but about trading, no. It's but also kind of funny that Lex says it because later on, when both Amber and Bray are being optimistic about the tribes getting along, Lex feels exactly the opposite. He does not believe the tribes are getting along. He does not want to go out there and have to trade with the tribes or deal with them. He thinks they're both being optimistic idiots. 
Oh, okay. This one is of the many sound- mysteries of the show. I don't this know. is going to sound really crazy now, but I just re- realized something. I did say mm. Lex doesn't go out, but last episode we had a mentioning to Paul that there was a casino. Yeah, he goes out. That's what I'm saying. No, he's so- seen the casino before he came to the mall. He has not gone yeah, to yeah, a yeah. But, in but, the mall. I mean, there was a lot of trading involved in the, the ca- in the casino. Okay. Of her, I don't know. He's Sorry. been to the casino, but he hasn't been there since he's no, come to the lately. mall. not lately. Was just something I suddenly realized. I don't know. I think it's one of those many mysteries. Like, you know, books belong to their readers. If you think he's gone out, he's gone out. If you don't think he's gone out, he hasn't gone out. I don't think we've, like, I don't think we ever get confirmation either way at this point. For me, if I can't prove it with whatever, what's been presented to me, then I just, it's not there. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. When they leave, they let us know they leave. So I'm not going to pretend that. You know, for example, I can't pretend that in season two, Dal had an affair with Jet, even though I really want him to. There's no evidence he did, because, yeah. Um, it would have been so funny. I wrote the story. It's in my head, but I know it didn't happen. Why do you want to get Jack off so badly? I'm interested in the truth. That's all. And there's another thing. If we find Jack guilty and punish him, it's only fair to look at all the other crimes. Like people gambling for rations. And all the other people who knew about the stash and kept quiet. Let's, let's go back to Lex's um, performance in <laughs> the trial for a minute, because that was pretty it was. impressive, wasn't Very, it? Yeah. yeah. Old star for Lex. It, it kind of makes you think that... It, it makes you think that he's done this before, that he's been in this, a similar situation, because he, he knows how to play the system itself. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, it was quite... It was so impressive. do you think... Well, he probably... Now I'm gonna sound crazy, but like truancy court, like has he had to like? Yeah, he's been in it. We haven't yeah. seen that, but come on, I, you can't tell me that kid has never gone to truancy court ever. He's been in some kind or, of like, yeah, he knows how to. You play know, it. his pre-tribe, he was an actor. Maybe he was in a scene in like Law and Order or something. But he's <laughs> definitely he knows how it works. <laughs> I feel like the writers realize they have this character. And they've already shown that he gets his way by bullying people. But someone was like, dude, there's got to be more to this kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they decide to actually give him some scope and breath to his character and mm-hmm. make it, you know, show that he can get what he wants without slamming some up someone against the wall and, you know, forcing his will on them. And it's what makes Lex a much more interesting character. He's not just mm-hmm. a bully, you know. Um, I, I loved it. I really, I love seeing Lex think, you know, and persuade people with his words. And, uh, and he, I, even though, you know, Jack was hoarding the food, I feel like this was a deserved win for Lex, you know, mm-hmm. like he earned it the right way. He mm-hmm. used his brain. He used his intelligence to persuade people to vote how he wanted. He didn't threaten anybody. He didn't bully anybody. And he got there. I'm like, bravo. Yeah. Well done. Blue ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> you got a star a little sticker like yay Lex used critical thinking to get himself out of a tr- out of trouble <laughs> and I, I'm always going to be impressed with that well done yeah I like the trial that was that's a good scene it's just it's one of the few trials I think did well so the big question is listening to the tribe listening to this trial and listening to the arguments put forth by Amber and Lex which are both very good arguments how would you have voted if you didn't have the behind the scenes knowledge that the rest that we actually have, would you have voted to, you know, Jack guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Based on the argument that Lex and Amber made. Okay. Um, at this point, do we have a sentence? Like if one way or another, like if he's found guilty, he gets slung out. If he's found not guilty, he doesn't. Is that the alternative? They didn't, they didn't give us one because okay. that's the thing. It was basically... See, didn't know what his sentence was going to be yeah i'm just i'm trying to figure out before yeah I, I, I'm just like, I say what we, we can't it can't be anything too harsh because yeah so that's the Jack, though, yeah. Like, yeah we just know that both lex and amber were not cool with the idea of tossing him out yeah, even though brian wanted to see him punished i would find jack guilty but he wouldn't get his he would be like you know a degree like it's not you know manslaughter but it's you know petty crime so like you know we might flog him two or three times but you know we're not cutting off his wrist 
I think maybe Sandra, would have, I think Sandra would have been able to come up with perfect punishments. But then, make, like, make him wash all the dishes for a week. Yeah, like he he did something bad. There needs to be a consequence, but not like a huge, you know, thing. Put him in the sure. stocks, throw tomatoes at him. That's a waste of food. So we I'm can't do that. I'm trying to think of what I would do at 14. Like, oh, I'm, I'm 40 kids? now. You know what I mean? Like, what would I have yeah. done at 14? How would I have voted for Jack? And that's again without any prior knowledge, just from the arguments mm-hmm. that both Amber and Lex made. I. I have to admit, I think I would be on board with Zandra. Because <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, I was like, you know, it's kind of a self-righteous kid. Because I was a good girl. I did what I was supposed to do. Kept my nose clean. And I had so little tolerance for anybody who would have done what Jack did. Mm-hmm. Like, we're starving, dude. We're all hungry. Yeah. It's not cool that you did that at all. I would be like, yeah, let's vlog him or something. Let's, we need, he needs to know. He needs to pay for this. Uh, that's uh, that's like, 14 year old me <laughs> I feel like he would need to be Like have some Consequence but not like a huge Consequence but I also Think that like Lex did win over the argument Because most of the kids Would have been found guilty as well Like most mm-hmm. once again Nobody is innocent in this group Nobody on the jury is innocent um, Which kind of makes it a very good Jury of your peers I guess because no, you're right, Hill. That's actually very interesting about the yeah. jury because four of them haven't committed any crimes in the tribe, really. You know, so they were like, "Yeah, they're perfectly fine voting Jack guilty because you know Lex's argument doesn't persuade them. They don't have anything to be afraid mm-hmm. of." But five of them are like, "Ooh, are guilty, ooh, are guilty," and you're right. That is a very, very cool thing to point out and for kids to recognize. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm just, I actually can't remember who's on the jury, and I feel really bad about that. Um, It's Bray, Amber, Zandra, Celine, but Celine abstains. You've got the kids, and I think Bob abstained as well. And, you know, of course, you have um, Dow. Yeah. Trudy did not come to the trial, and of course, Brian also voted for him to be not guilty. Yeah. So it's just pretty much everyone had a vote. Yeah. Every, okay. Everyone that wanted a vote could have had yeah. a vote. Oh, and because we haven't given Bray any hate yet, um, I wanted to point out. No, I feel like it's tradition now. We have to do it. We have um, to. We can have like a Bray's haze corner. Just a, just a Bray <laughs> hate moment. You know, I do it to Lex. So I'll do it to Jay. I'm I know. Jay. Um, we we'll always know. do it to Jay. Um, but. I did think it was funny that when they're voting for who thinks Jack is guilty and should be slung out, Bray raises his hand. And I was like, where do you get off? Right. Right. Okay. It wasn't just me. I'm glad. Thank you, Liz, for saying that. It just made me laugh. I was like, oh, Bray, you self-righteous prig. (laughs) What are you doing? I just stolen food from these people. Jack was just holding back food he already had. Like... You know, Bray isn't my favorite character on the face of the planet. We've already established that, but it's hard for me to not be like, Bray, epic tool bag, blah, 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 and continue. But that's besides the point. And I say this as someone who does love Bray. I, I can love a character and rip them to pieces. You know, I love Bray. I think he's great. He's one of, he's one of my faves. But I have no problem calling him out for his douchebag. <laughs> he gets better he- over time. And I do, I say it with love. Like, there are characters that I absolutely hate, but yet I love the actor. Mm. Like, it's... Uh. I don't so, agree with Sabine. I don't feel like Bray is better in time. I actually think no. Bray is better like this. This is yeah. my... This is the Bray I like. I like a Bray who isn't perfect and isn't trying to live towards a perf- perfect ideal. I don't like when J- Bray becomes a concept, which he does yeah. in season two onward, where he just has to be this perfect ideal of a person and is not allowed to actually have any shades of gray to his character. I, I don't like that Bray. I prefer season one Bray through and through because he's human. He's a mess and he should be mm. because he's 16 years old. Mm-hmm. So I think I like season one. Like season one, like, isn't my all time like favorite. Like if I'm going to sit down and watch an episode just for fun, I won't watch an episode from series one. But overall, I like series one for, like, the grittiness of it. Mm-hmm. Like, but if I just want something fun to watch, I'm watching four. 
No, no, don't. I know. Everyone no. says that. Early tree. Know. Why? Why? Because I like the technos deep down. No. And I think it's just more, there's like some. Oh, Ew. Ew. Oh, Ew. It hurts. You guys. I know. It hurts. It's just. You know what's got your back? I think there's some zings to it. I don't really like The Chosen. I think The Chosen went on for way too long. So, like, one season of The Chosen, great. Two seasons, not so much. Technically, we only got one season episode-wise, because it starts midway season two. I don't midway care. Midway season three. Like three. Coming back to the Same. tribe. Thank you, Lance. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a bit too far. So... Let's go to the trial. <laughs> um, just, just for a moment, let's talk about um, Amber's kind of reaction here, because it's quite important, because... Obviously, she um, she she's quite disappointed of the verdict. Um, but what do you think? Like, is it is it okay that the the tribe have made this vote in the first place, or do you think that they should have found him guilty? Um, I feel like it's good that they even just went through this process. And again, I'm totally fine with Jack being found not guilty because of the way Lex was able to convince people that he shouldn't be guilty. Again, he didn't use bullying, he didn't use blackmail, he didn't buy anybody off. He used logic and reason. If you're going to find him guilty, then you have to admit your crimes too. And um, so for me, that worked. And I really do like the fact that Amber is disappointed because Lex outwitted her. And I thought that was cool. I do. I, I like how... Because it, it forces Amber to think, okay, okay, I got to be a little more clever dealing with him, you know? <laughs> And I think the the trial set like the precedent. Like, yeah, he wasn't found guilty. He kind of is guilty, but we still now know that we have a foundation for where our things would go. It's a very reasonable um, examination of a child for a child's eye. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They can walk away from this with a lot to chew on. You know. Mm -hmm. and, what you need to think about when you're trying to consider someone else is guilty or when you're dealing with a crime. And I think that's the biggest point. Uh, and again, probably that's why that's the first trial we do, do see. It is a very gray area. And there will be consequences, but, you know, they're not too heavy. It's like getting in trouble with your parents. You have a buffer. You know, that's the whole point of growing up. You're allowed to screw up and it's never going to be that bad. You learn something from it, but it's not going to wreck your life because, you know, your parents are there to protect you from that. And I feel like this trial is the same way. And kids get a chance to safely examine how something like this is handled and how to think about it. And, and okay, we can go on with our lives now. You know what I mean? The yeah. food's out there and we can move on and we all learn something from it. And Very true. I, I did love how everyone that everyone started chatting about themselves <laughs> when the verdict was read. Was I can't cool believe it. Like, <laughs> right. off? He's not guilty. <laughs> like, right? That was really some cool. great ADR there. <laughs> there. <Yeah. laughs> right. Just a nice little moment. Like, yeah. I love that satisfied look that Lex gives Amber. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Oh, get a from you two. <laughs> right? Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> but I also like the fact that even though Amber is disappointed, she does handle it with grace. She's like, okay, you won this fair and square. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Begrudgingly, whatever. <sighs> I don't agree, but you, you, your argument was better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> right? I can't believe you're still on about this. I am not, repeat, not interested in her. You are lying. I saw you sitting next to her. So what was I doing? Holding her hand? Oh, you probably were for all I know. They were probably all watching and saying, poor Trudy, poor girl hasn't got a chance. Listen to me. Okay, let's um, move on to Trudy. Um, obviously, we see um, Trudy's postnatal depression continuing as she refuses to go to the trial. And we see her like bemoaning the future and the fighting over food. And we see her snap quite, <laughs> quite a lot of Celine. She does it again here. Um, what are your thoughts about... Like, tr just what's your thoughts about tr Trudy's reaction to Celine and like the whole situation? Like, I think Trudy is just so completely overwhelmed by everything. She's had Bray, the guy she she's in love with, to herself for months, and now she has to share him. And well, having a baby is a lot of change, and change is something that she just cannot deal with, especially not right now. But something I did see in this was that obviously Bray knows more about Trudy because at one moment he shouts at her and then 
he holds her when she falls apart. Is it that strange that these are mixed signals for her? I mean, does he do it out of responsibility for his dead brother, or is there more to it? I mean, he did say to Amber that Trudy has had a harder time adjusting to the dead of the adults than anyone else. And yeah, I, I always wondered if there was more to the story there. I mean, I think with that, he made her cry and then kind of felt bad that he made her cry. Like, he didn't think that he did that. Like, Yeah, Bray doesn't deal with emotions that well. <laughs> Neither does Trudy. She just falls apart. I just see two kids dealing with a situation that is too big for either of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I we know, we've all seen and heard stories with full-blown adults unable to deal with this. Married people who said, we're going to commit ourselves to each other and have a life together and have children. And we have seen them blow up because they had a child, you know? Mm -hmm. So here we have a 15-year-old girl, 16-year-old boy. Why should anyone be surprised at the cluster that this is? And also, I feel bad for Celine, too, who's just really trying to help. But at the same time, if you guys are going to claim that Amber is only talking to Bray to keep him away from Trudy, you can't deny that, you know, Celine oh. is definitely leaning into this oh, so she can totally. be close to Bray. Yeah. You know? no, I totally get that, too. And I know that she's totally doing that. But she also is, I think, trying to help as well. And if Trudy isn't using the baby to try and get Bray, which she does, too, but is just not as effective as uh, Celine. Then I think she also Celine's that door to say, "Hey, I'll take care of this kid. Maybe it will work in my favor." I do really feel Trudy's pain, though. I feel both of them. I feel so bad for both of these kids in this situation. I didn't have postpartum depression this badly, but I do know people who have. I I did have it, but um, fortunately for me, it did not cause me to reject my son or my husband at the time. Um. But I do remember that feeling. It's really hard not to feel threatened by someone who seems to get it better with your child or connects better with them. My son didn't like me. You know what I mean? Like I, I gave birth to this child. I brought him into the world and I couldn't calm him and mm -hmm. I couldn't comfort him, you know, because he was feeling my tension and all of my hormones and stuff like that. And so it'd be my aunt who'd be able to do it. She, I'd always give him to her and she was his buddy. They were besties. She could always put him to sleep. She could always calm him down. And I feel like if my aunt, if it hadn't been my aunt, someone who I love and I'm not threatened by, mm -hmm. I would have felt a lot like Trudy, who is this other female coming in, taking my kid and making me look really terrible when I already feel terrible about how bad I suck at this anyway. You know, and of course, Bray's smiling at her like, thanks, Celine, we couldn't do this without you. And it's just like, you mofo, you know, like, you're you're playing yeah. on my insecurities. I I think I'd feel the same way. I'd hate Celine, even though Celine doesn't deserve it. Because I'd be so threatened by her. I already feel terrible about this. And I suck at it. And I'm trying. And I want my mom. And and here you come. And it's so easy for you, Celine, you know. And yeah, and I get it. I feel so bad for them both. I mean, tr Trudy refers to herself as a lousy mother several times. It's obvious that she's feeling crappy and then seeing Celine being a natural with the baby. Just as she said, as she said to Trudy, if what she says to her daughter, what's going to happen to you? No dad and me for a mom. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's she's aware of her shortcomings. She's aware that she's not built for this. She's not ready for it. And here's Celine, who's just like, Chipper Rainbow is Donna Reed. I'd want to shoot her with a harpoon if she came in the room. Yep. Like, Get out of here and put my baby down. Let me ruin her life. That's my responsibility. <laughs> Let me ruin her. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that for a bit. Because um, let's, let's flip that around. So, like, do you think that Celine should have completely stepped back and let just Trudy try and look after the baby? Or do you think that she is compelled to try and look help look after oh, her? Oh, that's a rough one. Like, See, I think... Because we talked about it in, like, the first episode. Like, Celine's priority, or not priority, prerogative is to collect abandoned kids. Like, she has this group of kids. So now, you know, Patsy, Paul, Chloe, they have other people to take care of them. They seem pretty, pretty well established with people. So now there's this baby that needs looking after, and the people who are supposed to be aren't really helping out. So she scoops up this kid. And also sees it as a mm -hmm. way to get to Bray. But, like, I think mm -hmm. truly, like, part of it was her collecting children. 
like she I does. Just, I made her seem like is. a witch. <laughs> so you agree that she 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 was right to continue yeah. and not step back? Like I think I, maybe she should have stepped back, but I do think that it's in her nature to try and help out, and that's what she was trying to do. Mm. With I think Bray is like a consolation. Given the situation, Celine's actions are perfectly acceptable. And this isn't as if we're living in the normal world where Celine is invading someone else's apartment to take care of their <laughs> child for them. You know what I mean? Hilarious. <laughs> exactly. They are living <laughs> in a post epoch world in a looted shopping mall. She has been looking after Brady from the moment she was born because Trudy was not able to do it. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, in her eyes, Celine is a naturally nurturing person. She wants to help people. She doesn't want to do terrible things to them. She wants to take care of them if they need it. Sure, she gets a bonus because of the way Bray smiles her every time she does it, but <laughs> that's clearly not the reason she's doing it, you know? She she wants to take care of this child. She wanted to take care of Trudy for Pete's sake. She took on that responsibility <laughs> to look after Trudy. And mm -hmm. I feel like in this situation, what Celine's doing is perfectly acceptable. And her shock at Trudy's anger and rage is genuine. Like, how can you talk to me like that after everything I've done for you? I was only doing it out of the goodness of my heart, you know? Which I think only fuels Celine's actions later on when she knows that what she's doing is becoming damaging and she keeps doing it anyway because she's starting to really dislike Trudy because of Trudy's mm -hmm. reaction to her, you know? And um, so, yeah, I, I don't think, like, right now that Trudy, that Celine's being intrusive or that she's being wrong for what she's doing. Brady does need someone to take care of her and she wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for Celine. That's true. Um, Has any one of you noticed because there, there was something that stood out for me in that argument Trudy actually says Bray your third's trying to take our baby that's what yeah I noticed that too not, yeah not, not her baby no their baby she refers to, to the baby as Bray <laughs> she has that really creepy conversation where you realize that Trudy is refusing to live in reality and she's gonna live in fantasy she's sitting there holding Brady yeah talking to her daughter and then she's just like, you don't have a father. You only have me. Would you like Bray to be your daddy? Wouldn't that be nice if he was your dad? Yeah. Yes, let's go find your new dad. And you realize, oh, she is diving into she's the deep end. for Cocoa Puffs. Of, um, I don't want to live with reality. It sucks. And I can't blame her. It does suck. So mm -hmm. let's just, this is an easy little fantasy to chase after. Mm -hmm. But she also mentioned that, what, last episode about like the whole, the whole raise the baby together and they'll name her after Zoot and it'll be sunshine and rainbows and you know yeah. all of that because that you know, was she's, that's what she would want for her daughter yeah to be raised with a mom and a dad but not just any cool. of the boys in the mall just bray which yeah <laughs> it's a particular yeah the particular mind, one <laughs> yeah well who else in the even mall? though well, for a while, I thought, um, da like, as a child, like, Dal seemed to pr be pretty into Trudy at one point. But yeah, he was another maybe. Martin. She did not reciprocate his feelings. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, dude, I'm two feet taller than you. This is weird. We look like Mitch Patch. <laughs> oh, super shakers. Stop it. Yeah, it's yep. true. Ashworth came up to her, her waist. It was weird. Yeah. He was, like, he was so tiny and so... She, she missed she out. He could have looked after her, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> he seemed interested. Like, he was right. totally into her. He even admits, like, he's into this girl, he's totally into her. And she was just like, um, she let him down gently, but she bounced. She was like, oh no, yeah. I suddenly want to be a mom now. Hey, I'm out. We'll, we'll get to this, but she didn't even just let him down. She yeah. left him. <laughs> she was like, no, you should stay here, Dal. Live out your dream. I'm gonna go back to being a single mom in a looted shopping mall. Exactly. That is better. Just saying. <laughs> there were other we boys get, in the uh, mall other than Bray. Who didn't try to kick her out and bully her? Actually, Dal did, so. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even qualify in there. <laughs> I'm just saying. All yeah. Dal was able to say is, I'm just, I'm glad you stayed. He can't admit that he wasn't one of those people who voted for her to leave. There like, wasn't a single Dal. bloody guy in the mall. Pool, just pool. Okay, there wasn't a single guy of the proper age <laughs> in the mall. <laughs> Poor Paul. Uh. What's next? Uh, cooking. Amber and Celine. 
and washing up. I'd love to be Zandra. She won't like it. Well, you don't want her cooking, do you? Let's talk about Leader Lex. He's finally got power, and let's see how he uses it. <laughs> so we see him in, or his first act as leader, he starts to divide the chores. Uh, I mean, I thought that was quite interesting. Like, what did you think about Lex carrying on Amber's rotor? Because I think... See, you guys are just going to be like, you're saying it's just because you like Lex. Um, once again, he realizes that we do need rule. And, like, we need to have this system in place. Like, yeah, they it's all... Yeah, very smart, isn't I think it? deep down, they all need... They know that they need it. They just don't like that they're not the one who's picking out who gets to do what. That is exactly it. Right yeah, there. Okay. Nailed it. Like, yeah. Because once again... Because he knows it works. someone tells oh, yeah. me... Like, I love mopping. I think we went on this before. I love to mop. I will mop. Fine. You tell me to do laundry, it's not happening. So, like, I, I feel like they all knew that they needed it. They just wanted to do what they wanted to do about it and not be told to do something they didn't want to do. I love this episode and seeing Lex as a leader. I don't think he's a bad one. He's got issues, like any leader does. Every leader needs to, you know, you need to be buffed up a little bit and all that. And I, I do think that the show, the episode does a really good job of showing his strengths and his weaknesses, and that he's not a failure as a leader. He does have things that need to be ironed out. But mm -hmm. yeah, I do like the fact that when Lex is not in a defensive position because he has some power, so he feels like he's in control, and he's much mm -hmm. more constructive when he feels like he's in control. He's dealing with everyone quite well. Oh, sure, he has his hardline misogynistic BS rules, mm -hmm. but he's not being a dick about it. You know what I mean? And I do like that. I, I like that he's not threatening. He's not shouting anybody down. Yeah. Um, he's talking to people. And yeah, this is how he feels. This is the way things have to be. And I like that. Um, Even though, like, as misogynistic as it seems, like, once again, these are kids. And when you're growing up, like, how many times and as a teacher, like, I try to teach my kids that this isn't the way of thinking, but, like, growing up, Girls had the baby doll, boys had the action figures. Like, girls were always taught at this point, like, you are the housekeepers. You are the people who do these roles. The boys are the ones who go up and fight. So, I don't think it's necessarily all way of thinking for the time period. Granted, watching it now, yeah. Would I have done that as a leader? No. But I still think it's misogynistic, but again, it's not. It's Lex being misogynistic, but not in his most toxic toxic form. It's a oh, very yeah. it's a very common misogyny, just like you said. Like, you know, you we live in a world where the girls are given toys that are really actually just the crap they're gonna have to use in their house when they grow up, you know, mm -hmm. and told that's a toy. That that play iron is a toy, you know what I mean? Where boys are actually given toys, really cool things, you know? Right. And um And you know, like so it's still misogynistic, but again, I don't feel like it's Lex at his most toxic or anything like that. Um, and I do, I do think he's being cunning. He's thinking about it, you know. Uh, I really, this is what I find the most interesting about Lex's leadership. What I find interesting is what this is what she's teaching kids. You'll notice that even though it is, the, the narrative paints Lex's actions as misogynistic. They make it very clear that he's being unfair by giving all mm -hmm. the girls these, these jobs <laughs> Well, the boys don't have to do them. The narrative is telling the children, this is not right. But you'll notice yeah. what's important is how the other boys react. They know it's wrong to give all the girls these jobs. But guess what? Not a single one of them speaks out against yeah. it because it benefits them. And I yeah. think that's what's important for children to understand. Yeah. This is a systematic, like, oppression of a people. And this is how you learn. This is how it happens. By other yeah. people who don't say anything oh, yeah. mm -hmm. because Good they point. benefit from this systematic oppression of another people. And that's what that's I really awesome. loved watching yeah. it. I was like, wow, Lex isn't the problem. It's really easy to say, oh, this guy is the cause of it. No, Lex isn't the cause of it. It's Ryan and Dal and Jack and even mm -hmm. Greg who don't look at that Rhoda and say, uh, this is Wait wrong. A sec. 
and yeah. maybe we should do some dishes or maybe we should do yeah. some cooking. They are totally fine with this system because they benefit from it. And I think that is the lesson kids walk yeah. away from. Like, oh, oh, it takes way more than one mm-hmm. person to create oppression. It takes other people to say it's okay because I benefited from it. And for me, I was like, that's a mic drop for this episode. That is so smart and so clever to put in a show for children. That's another scene I really like that continues on with the theme. Um, Instead of telling children and preaching to them that we should all work together to get stuff done, or as we mentioned in the last episode where Hill had pointed out that Celine had gone about it the wrong way, trying to get these kids Mm -hmm. to ration the food and work together and get the dishes done. This is a really great example of how to show the kids this without sounding preachy because the girls are all presenting dinner to the guys and they're all puffing out their chests like a bunch of peacocks like, yeah, fighting with sticks all day and dinner's waiting for me on the table. This is awesome, you know. (laughs) And, you know, Lex calls out Zondra for cooking. You weren't supposed to be cooking. You were supposed to be washing up. And she's, look, the girls helped me, so I helped them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Done, you know, and I just think it's a, such a clever way to teach children how things get done without preaching exactly. at them mm-hmm. to do it. The girls, there's a lot of help like each subtle other. Subtle teamwork, I like. That. I'm telling you, this episode is yeah. fantastic. Good. Back. So well, right, written, well directed too. I love the shots in yeah. this episode. There's some great shots. I love long shots where you actually get to finally see what everybody's wearing from head to toe. That's the lighting is really good. Like, oh, yeah. look at you. Alexa, I didn't notice your pants before because the, the camera Alexa's was... Alexa's pants are awesome. <laughs> I love his pants. With this costume. <laughs> like pants. this... Oh, sorry. Like, I like this costume. It's not my favorite, but I do like those pants. I do love it. It looks so good on him. Right. So colorful and flashy. <laughs> He's like the greatest showman on earth. I love it. But I noticed that about this episode. I was like, these camera shots are really good. And we're getting some nice takes of the kids from head to toe. Like and- there's... Less scenes, they're longer. Yeah, I just felt like this episode, they got it. They figured it out. They know what this is now. I I wonder. Because I know, back to like behind the scenes, I know they didn't film consecutively. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if maybe this one was done later. So that's what I said. It felt like there was a break between the last episode and this one. Like, okay, we did that batch of episodes. And they're reviewing it. And now we're here. It does feel like some time has passed. I think started yeah, filming. I, I think this is like a back, like done later in this season. And there's subtle differences. Like for example, in this episode, Celine and the children are all wearing the same makeup. Mm-hmm. You see that Dal and Jack are starting to lean toward the same makeup. Like you just like feel that. like there's, there's been some time to start differentiating mm-hmm. that segment. Mm-hmm. This segment. Now we're knee deep into living with these kids in the mall. What are you doing here? I've come to eat. I don't recall you doing the guard duty. Well, I had to stay with Trudy, she's not well. If you don't do your bit for the tribe, you can't expect the tribe to feed you. Well, it doesn't seem to be any shortages. Sorry. I was going to say, speaking of the moment where um, the kids or the girls bring all the food out and then Bray coming there, it, it made me think because Lex instantly goes to Bray, you don't work, you don't eat. Mm-hmm. And it, it actually something that the first thing that came to my mind on that for me was the techno's no pay, no play policy. When you have to do the job in order to get fed. I really liked this moment because it's important to show how Bray seems to think that if he simply doesn't participate, he doesn't have to abide by anything. He's just not there. He's not participating in this tribe, but he still expects the tribe to feed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how and I was- like, Dude, you've done nothing for the tribe, and yet you you feel totally fine showing up for mealtime. And I like that Lex called him out. Like, yeah, I gave you one yeah. job. I gave you an easy job. You literally had to stand in one place near the sewer entrance. That's all you had to do. And you refused to participate that much. And then you think you can come and get food? So I feel yeah. like Lex was in the right there. L- Lex, and Lex was in the right. Absolutely. And I, and I, I, I like Bray's reaction. Like, he's so surprised that, oh, what? I don't get to get what I want, even though I'm not contributing, which he's not. And then, of course, he turns it to, well, oh, fine, I'll bring Trudy's food. And 
you know, Lex is like, well, then she can come get it herself. Because I actually am on Lex's side here mm-hmm. because it's like, pray, no, you don't get to use Trudy as your way to get food. You know what I mean? I, um, I find it interesting that that's in this episode, though, because we've just had the trial on, like, stealing food. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's the question of, is Bray taking from the tribe without doing his due? Like, sh- is that a trialable offense? Like, you know, he's, what has he contributed to in this day to get food? Like, I think with the point of this moment with Bray is to show that Bray seems to think that he can just coast along without making a decision. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to commit to any actual thing. As Amber already pointed out to him, are you with us or not? You know what I mean? And Bray doesn't want to make that decision. And he doesn't want Lex to be in charge. But at the same time, he wasn't even willing to vote against Lex. He wasn't even going to go to the vote. He didn't want to be involved. And I think this is also important for kids to learn. You want to change things in your community? Get up. Mm-hmm. Go outside. Yeah participate don't just sit there whining about the world and it being the way you don't want it to be be an activist change the world with your own actions so here's, here's bray complaining that he doesn't like the way the mall is being run but he doesn't want to do anything about it he doesn't want to participate yeah. help change it you know and he's being called out for it and i love how even amber goes look dude would you be willing because lex is being really yeah. reasonable he's like yeah. If you're willing to do the job, you can eat. And Amber's like, mm-hmm. are you willing to do that, Bray? Because if you were, the rest of us could get on with our dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that line of hers. Because Bray, he really does feel like he should get without actually doing anything. And he's like, he's supposed to be above all of this. And you say what you want about Lex, but at least he stood up and took on the yeah. leadership role and is doing his best. What have you done, Bray? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much. And I did have to laugh at Celine though, because Bray's then finally allowed to go get Trudy's food. And Celine just gives him a plate that's loaded with a double portion of everything. With a don't let him see it. But she still what? gives him food. That's yeah, she's got a big heart. Yeah, it's Celine. And you know it's brain. Yeah, nah. it's, it's, it's Bray. She won't let him starve. <laughs> But she's not going to let him or Judy starve, you know? And hey, she didn't give him any more than what Lex and Bob are eating, which can we... Why is Bob getting that portion? I want to know what's going on there. Because he's adorable. Lex, I thought you wanted to starve the dog. Why are you feeding him? I know. Bob is doing the best at guard Judy, better than anyone else. Bob does not guard. He sleeps. No, he... No, I I agree with Sabine. Bob has proven to be better at guard duty than anybody else. And Lex is like, you know what? Respect. (laughs) You told me Zoot was in the mall. Well done, Bob. I hate ya. It's just funny after Lex saying, like, we can't keep animals unless we eat them. (laughs) And then he's like, double portions for Bob. Yeah, but at least (laughs) he saw the use of the dog now. After Bob warned everyone started barking when Zood entered. Lex is now on Team Bob. <laughs> it's just, it's funny. Or maybe Lex just has a secret soft spot for dogs that he doesn't want anyone to know. See, that's what I've always thought. <laughs> just because Lex is, is. like, Bob is the one person in the mall he doesn't actually hate. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what? I'd give Bob double rations, too. I like him the He's most. He's adorable. Best. Give him all the food Bob's he wants. the best. Do you think it was the locusts? I think it's its ghost. There's no such thing. Um, so yeah, this, that leads us to our final thoughts of the episode. Um, yeah, what, what did everyone think of the ghost of Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Um, try, remember, try and remember back when you originally watched it. Like, did you think Zoot's ghost was going to come? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I just what? loved how Chloe instantly went with it as a kid. Chloe, yeah. that look on her face. Maybe it's the ghost of Zoot. She's having so yeah. much fun messing with these people. Oh, of course. And I, I like the next episode, Bray. Like, I think that's the one time I like Bray when he's just like laughing about it. Then I like how Amber shoots him down. We'll talk about that next time. I love that whole scene. I love the ladies getting together. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah. 
it's so beautiful, the girls and how they have to work out. And again, they make the point that none of the other boys stood up for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a system of oppression that they're all supporting. And I love how they they break it down. They can't, they're not rules of authority. They can't tell the boys that what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. And I love how she says, she, you know, the boys liked how we cleaned up the cafe, right? Well, they need to decide. Either they're willing to do their part of the work or they can do it all themselves to get it this way. You know what I mean? And I loved the theme, the girl power, the camaraderie. Oh, I loved it I all. Think the I love Zandra on that with the, I love it. Lex will go Lex ballistic. Will go ballistic. <laughs> but I also think it's in this point, like they realize that they, they can't tell, like, you have to show them like it goes back to the whole you know how do you get people to do chores when they don't want to and they they are sort of figuring it out that like this is how we got to do it to get everyone to play by the rules yeah i just love it it's so sweet it's so adorable all the girls together and the hands i'm just like oh it's oh it's so well done it's yeah. well shot it's so clever Ah, oh, and it's another way of teaching kids how to think outside of a problem that you might be in, yeah. you know? The girls have to get very creative. And I love I love Amber's attitude this whole episode cuz she knows this is not going to last. You can't force people to do something they don't want to without them fighting back, you know, and watching all these problems mount out for Lex, you know, and eventually it's going to come to a head where it's going to be too much for him and even he's going to be like, "I don't want this job. It sucks." <laughs> Oh, it's just, it's such a great, adorable scene. I love it. Love it. Oh, did I say love it? I'm not sure. Did you get that? No. I love it. No. Can you say it like four more times? <laughs> I love it. Just for safety? <laughs> just for safety. I want you to have this for posterity, Lance. I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. well, that brings episode 11 to a close. Uh, thank you very much, panel. And we will see you next week for episode 12.